When looking at all of the animals on planet Earth, there are none who have built the infrastructure and society that humans have today. Despite not being the biggest or strongest animals on the planet, humans have the ability to communicate on a higher level, higher than any other animal on the planet. Humans create very complex and emotional relationships unlike any other species, for example, having pets or just other meaningful human relationship. These two different ways to communicate for progress towards the goal of human, human advancement and emotional bonds are the things that make us human. In our everyday advancing world, there are many new ways to communicate. So, um, so yeah, um, my name is Ursina Teuscher, and I am a decision coach, so I help people make big decisions, oftentimes about their careers, but also just other kind of lifestyle decisions. And uh, sometimes I work with them on big decisions, changes in their lives and other times I work more on um, changing habits and changing their, their their daily routines of making decisions. Yeah, those are kind of my focus areas. And they also teach decision making at PSU. Mm. One of the major things is it's flattened space, right? So we can communicate with someone across the world in real time. Uh, so communities are connected regardless of, you know, geographical location. Definitely, and I think there's there's so many things that have definitely changed for better. I think uh, one of them I can think of is that more people can actually communicate together. So I'm thinking of, um, as an example, minorities who, especially small minorities, who can get a critical mass by communicating not just within their local tribe, but just kind of having that worldwide possibility of bringing in new movements and new uh, uh, raising awareness in different ways. We could look at sort of online communication um, that's open to lots large groups of people um, and compare kind of how do you conversations, how did they happen on kind of early news groups versus like how do those public you know, conversations happen on a platform like Facebook. Um, and that's a place where I think you can start to see the effects of the design of the platform on what kind of communication is possible. As technology has changed, so have our interactions with it. Far away are the days of the telegraph or the fax machine. Phones and computers have become mainstream, and not having one means exclusion from large parts of society, including social media and most forms of news and politics. Our day-to-day -day lives are centered around our access to technology and what it allows us to accomplish. Both work and play heavily require these new technologies. How else would you contact your business partners in China? By mail? How else would you send those documents? How else would you organize that house party if not through social media or a myriad of calls? Technology has become the focal point in our lives, and without it, what would we do? Have you seen a change in the way people encounter or approach the decisions they face as technology has been more involved in people's lives? I haven't seen research to back this up, but I think one of the cliches is that we talk to each other less with our phones, so now the most, like, I mean, think about how many songs, again, with my specialty around sexuality, how often DM is referred to uh, in, within sexual politics. So we talk to each other less and text more, message more. That's probably one of the more common trends I see in the work that I do. It changes what is easy to do, um, what I might think is reasonable to do. In that sense, I think, um, yeah, I think lots of technologies sort of changed kind of what social networks we might be part of or considered kind of close to us.
With these new mediums for communication, there are a wide variety of complex problems and benefits that could have never been imagined before. Communication in the past happened much slower, and jobs needed in the workplace were vastly different. Today, there's a greater need for tech-savvy workers who will be adaptable to the current technology. But with the great level of technology, there are some basic drawbacks, like using phones or Facebook during work. Do you think that with the rise of technology, there is a decrease in personal productivity or productivity with those around people with technology? One of the problematic things that I, that I see in, in technology is just the, the mass of, of it, like the, the many opportunities that you have. Um, it's hard to decide where to put your energy and your time and to not be distracted by interactions that are not valuable. Right? So I think we have more of a, a responsibility but also a, an opportunity to make choices there as to how we want to interact and with whom and how long and, and all that. And if, we're, if we don't make those choices carefully or consciously, there, there's a, a big chance that we just get, we, we get kind of derailed by, by technology. And, The research I've seen is we play more games at work, <laughs> so like more and more offices block things like Facebook, block uh, really any access. I, in the time that I've worked, um, it's funny, when I first started my career, I didn't ever see people watching TV at work, and now people will often set up their phones and watch something on Netflix while they're doing their work. So I would imagine, again, I haven't seen the data, but I would imagine productivity has gone down because we have more distractions. Though technological advances have revolutionized our communication between each other, it has become one of the largest problems our society faces today. The alienation of technology has turned the table to where we are owned by the very technology we consume. Smartphone addiction, for example, has become an ever-growing distraction since they've come out. While some work suggests the absolute existence of a specific smartphone addiction, several researchers highlight the role of problematic behavior such as the checking habit, personality traits like impulsivity, and psychiatric comorbidities such as ADHD and or depression in the internet and smartphone overuse. These adverse effects of misusing technology have also caused a chain reaction of clinical and social issues. My specialty is gender and sexualities. So I think the most prominent thing that I see is the way in which we make uh, sexual and romantic connections. So for example, research has shown that the dating model in the early 1900s created a very competitive model in the way that we pick people we want to be with. Um, it's where a lot of the game language, so first base, second base, third base, it created this whole competitive sexual model and culturally we moved out of that into getting together. So more and more Americans chose to pick partners by going to social events. And uh, this ended up being a really powerful thing because instead of being on a date, which I lovingly refer to as a sexual interview, uh, you hung out with people and if there was chemistry, you pursued it, but at a pace in which you didn't feel that you had to decide in that moment. And then with dating apps, we've now found ourselves back into a lot of um, serial dating. So you basically meet with someone and decide in that 45 minutes or an hour whether or not you want to sleep with them. And so it's put us back into this situation in which you're going on date after date after date. And so I see a lot more people being sexually disappointed, frustrated, and disenchanted um, because of that. So dating apps have gamified hooking up.
Technology has given people the ability of high-speed communication, meaning that people never really stop communicating, either through phone, email, or collaborative online sources. Unfortunately, constant stimulation also has its downfalls. Phones and computers have made people accessible nearly 24-7, and business is able to happen nearly anytime, anywhere. With that, platforms we use or are exposed to push advertisements of their own, making it so we're always looking at something someone else is trying to sell. We are in an age where we are making rapid fire choices without taking the time to think about whether we may or may not be influenced by this constant exposure. So I guess the first thing that comes to mind, there are um, different kinds of algorithmic management techniques, um, which I think we see in a lot of different contexts. I think there's this belief that technology will cut out the unnecessary work so that we can be more efficient and productive. I tend to see the opposite. So uh, every time someone learns a new platform, a new platform comes along, and so we're constantly relearning. I think about every time they change, uh, even something as basic as Microsoft Word, right? I watch how some people know how to use that, uh, others don't, and then because of uh, trying to communicate across like pages and Word, I see a lot more inefficiency. Technology can, could make use of those um, structures to offer decision tools. At this point, I don't see too much out there yet that's very useful, but I hope that that will come. Technology has led to all kinds of surprises. People expect a lot to come from technology. Sometimes their dreams come true, other times it's something completely unexpected. The idea of global communication existed before phones and computers, but nobody would have expected a network from the US government to become the internet, something essential to everyone's everyday life. It's hard to compare the negatives of technology to the positive because it's just so impactful. So is there anything remarkable you found that has resulted from technology that maybe you hadn't expected? <laughs>